What's up, church? Who's glad to be here today? Anybody glad to be in God's house? Amen. Hey, it's good to see you at church and especially everybody who's on the other side of the camera today. Uh, we know that people watching online all the time, but we have a 430 service who watches every single weekend. It's a campus for us, that, and that campus is a video campus. happens 430 every Sunday, and so come on, like we've never done it before. Can we put our hands together for the 430 crowd and everybody who's online with us today? Glad you're with us. Glad you're part of our church family, and we're in week number eight, Ocho, all right? We're in week eight of a series we're calling The Beautiful Attitudes, Beautiful Attitudes, and we'll get into that in just a moment, but I do want to, I want to let you know that we've got a couple things coming up, and one of them is, uh, you probably heard both of them on the news video there, but one of them is um, we're, our kids, our students are going to Motion this week. Motion is a huge conference, one of, yeah, it's one of the biggest uh, youth conferences in America, in Birmingham, Alabama. And every year our students go and they're filled up, they're recharged, and uh, they get on fire for God. And, and I'm believing, uh, like never before, this year as they go, they're going to they're gonna find their calling, they're going to find their purpose, they're going to connect with God in ways that they never have before. And so Motion Conference is coming up. I want you to be praying for our students this week. Let's pray that God would speak to them, that God would direct their steps. Amen? Because, hey, the next generation, it's not the next generation, it's the now generation. God's working in them right now, everybody. And so let's be praying for them. But also, small group leader sign-ups are happening. And if you're looking for a way to just uh, get more involved, to, to, to be uh, more intentional in what you do in church and your relationship with God, I like to say that if you want to take your relationship to the next level, lead a small group, right? Because it does something to you. It helps you. It puts a little bit of responsibility on you to, to, to prepare and to be ready, and you learn and grow through that season. But, but what I like to say is that if you can do four things, you can lead a small group, all right? Everybody say ESPN. ESPN. Now, uh, now say it like you were watching ESPN, all right? ESPN, all right? ESPN. Yeah, all right, ESPN. If you can do ESPN, four things, you can lead a group. And what I like to encourage you is take something you're already doing, all right? So if you like to crochet... I don't know how you would, I don't, I don't know what you do with your fingers when you crochet. But if you like to do that, then invite some other people to crochet with you in ESPN. I'll tell you what it means in a minute. If you like to, if you like to run, Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. I'm, I'm more of a stationary biker myself. I like that. It's better on the old knees. But, but if you like to do that, invite some other people to run with you in ESPN. If you, if you like to play... Flag football, invite some people in ESPN. What, so what is that? It's encourage. Just encourage somebody. Uh, scripture. Share a scripture. Do the verse of the day, right? Do the Bible app, verse of the day. And, and then pray. You can just say the simplest of prayer. You don't have to be trained. You don't have to have a Bible degree to do, lead a small group. And then N is next steps, all right? So you want to you encourage, give scripture, pray, and give some next steps. And, and you're a small group leader, all right? So and I, I want to encourage you, go online to our website, register to lead a group there. And uh, I'm telling you, it will take your walk with the Lord to a whole new level, all right? All right. Well, we're, we're going to get into today's uh, message. And I, I have been on break for the last four weeks or so. And uh, not all of that's vacation for me, uh, working most of those weeks. But did a pastor's retreat, did a prayer retreat in there, did, uh, had, did have a vacation. But uh, I, I like to do that every year because I, uh, I want to be the pastor here for a long time, everybody. I, I don't, I don't want to burn out and I don't, I don't want to flicker, all right? I want to be strong for you as I lead you. So, um, and I, I figure uh, when everybody else is taking vacation, I'll take some too, all right? How about that? All right. So, um, so I'm glad to be back, and we're wrapping up today's uh, series, today and next Sunday. We're wrapping it up with one word. We're talking about the same word, but in two different contexts. Because Jesus, he kind of, he, he wraps up the beautiful attitudes with, with the same word. He says, blessed are those who are persecuted. And then in verse 11, blessed are those who are persecuted. And so today what we're going to do is we're, we're going to talk about this word that we don't really like. I mean, we... We don't like persecution. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah. Nobody, nobody wants to be persecuted. And so as we look, we've looked for the last seven weeks at these, these are beautiful attitudes. They're kingdom values. They are core principles that Jesus teaches us 
in his most famous sermon, all right, and actually it's in the introduction to his most famous sermon, he gives us these beautiful attitudes. Let's look at it. If you've got your notes, pull them out, be ready. We're going to take a lot of notes today, look at, write some things down, but he says, blessed are those who are, say this with me, persecuted. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, because you stood for what was right, because you live righteously, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, we, we, like, we like the beautiful attitudes, but this is the one I think we struggle with sometimes. Like, we're good with the first seven, you know what I mean? I'm good. Lord, I'm cool with a pure heart. I'd like a pure heart, right? I'm, I'm, I'm good. Lord, if you, I'm even good with mourning. I'll, I'll take, blessed are those who are hunger, hungry and thirst. They hunger and thirst for righteousness. I like that one. Blessed are those who are peacemakers. I'll, I'll be a peacemaker, but don't, don't make me do persecution. God, I, I don't want to deal with that. And so we're going to look at that today because I think it's the first seven of these beautiful attitudes that actually help us live righteous. And we're persecuted for the first seven. Is this making sense to you? We're, that's what righteous living is, is when we're, when we're living out these beautiful attitudes that God, that Jesus gives us. And so if we're not being persecuted, we, we might just look in the mirror and go, am I, how am I doing on in these beautiful attitudes? Am I living these beautiful attitudes out? Am I walking the way God wants me to walk? And so in verse in, uh, 10 kind of indicates there's going to be a persecution for those of us who choose to stand for what's right. For those who live righteously. And so we don't like to talk about it. But hey everybody, it's in the Bible. So I figured we might as well, alright? And, and Paul says to Timothy, in, in Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3, he says, In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life, that's a righteous life, in Christ Jesus, will be what? Persecuted. No, we don't, that's, that's what I'm saying. We don't, we don't want persecuted. You're thinking, Pastor Ben, you've been gone for four weeks, and you couldn't teach us something else, right? You couldn't come up with something better than persecution? You're supposed to, you're supposed to be preaching the good news today. Where's the good news, Pastor Ben? I have news. It's just not good news, all right? And the news is, Jesus says, you're going to be handed over to be persecuted. That's the news. And you'll be put to death, and you'll be hated by all nations because of me. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah, right? That's the news for us. But, it, but look at it. Persecuted, put to death, hated by all. And that seems pretty extreme, doesn't it? In fact, I think that's, it's a hard verse to, for us to digest because we live in America. This is America. This is one nation under God. Indivisible with liberty and justice for all. And, and for, for somehow, some reason, a lot of people have begun to think like that Christianity has, has something to do with politics. This is not in my notes, everybody, but it's called Christian nationalism. Where, bless God, Christians vote a certain way and act a certain way and they do th certain things politically. It has nothing to do with politics. It has everything to do with following Jesus. All right? Listening to his word, living out the word that he has for us. And listen, we don't get this. We don't understand what it means to be persecuted. But there are people around the world today who are losing their lives. Today is their last day on earth because they are in a church service in an underground church meeting somewhere. They have a Bible in their house. They are being beheaded. They are being whipped. They are being imprisoned for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I think for just a moment, we need to kind of put aside all of the things that we feel like is persecution, and we need to honor those who are giving their lives for the call of Christ today. Can we just honor those today? Thank God for them and pray for them. They're literally, they're, today's their last day, right? And so it's hard for us to digest, but, but persecution is happening around the world, and I think it is happening here more and more. It's not like we see it around the world, but, but I, think, I think it has the possibility to happen. I remember learning about persecution in, in a church as a young man and you know, hearing that you know, one day you're, you're going to be persecuted for your faith. One day it's going to be against the law to read the Bible, and I thought... That's not going to happen in America. I mean, we're, we're the land of the free, home of the brave. We've seen God bless America at baseball games. K-12 
can't take that away from us, right? But, but I, I, think, I think that's kind of the stance of most people, most Christians especially. It's like, oh, persecution really won't happen here. It's not something that I really have to deal with. And as a result of that, we're unprepared for persecution. We're unprepared to even be, to, for, for people to disagree with us. We're unprepared in how we respond and how we live the life that God's called us to live. And so here's the thing. Comfortable Christianity produces complacent Christians. And that's what, that's, that's what we see a lot of today in the church is complacency. Complacent Christians. Now, if you're not prepared for, for persecution, when it comes, it will eat your lunch. All right? And so what I want to do today is I want, I want to help us learn how to respond but let's define persecution, first of all. What is it? Persecution is hostility and ill treatment, especially because you believe a certain way. Especially because you're a Christian. Especially because you, you believe uh, on, the, on a, a certain thing about religion. And so, a lot of times we want to avoid the persecution. But God actually uses persecution to catapult us into purpose. That's not in your notes, but might be worth writing down. Persecution often catapults us into purpose. He uses things that we go through. He uses things that we're experiencing in life to help us find the purpose for our life. Come on, somebody. That's good stuff right there. So uh, what I want to do today is I want to help you discover. I want to help you deal with persecution. How do we respond to it? And... Um, and I want to show you how to do it God's way. If we do it God's way, what, what will we be? Anybody know? Blessed. Every B attitude, every one of them, every beautiful attitude starts with blessed. When we do it God's way, there is a blessing. Okay? So, um, so we're going to look at a story in the Bible today. And we're going to learn how do, we, how do we deal, how do we respond to persecution. And it's actually in the book of Daniel. Now, it's not about Daniel. We're actually going to study today about his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and a billy goat, okay? And uh, <laughs> I, I, honest to God, I, I, when I was growing up, I thought his name was Billy Goat. I, 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 that's, what I, that's what I remember, and learning about him. And uh, I guess maybe the teacher told me, and it stuck with me that I remembered. I don't know. But I thought his name was B Billy Goat, but it's Abednego. <laughs> and we're going we're gonna to study these guys today. Because this story, it's written in a season, actually in a, in, in a time of history, I think, that has some similarities to where we are in America. See, what happened was um, Israel had been captured by Babylon. And the smartest, brightest Hebrew people were exiled into Babylon. And they were forced uh, to go to Babylon. And this Babylonian culture was infiltrating their lives. So it was ch trying to change what they believed. I mean, you, you go to Babylon and, and it's, oh, every way leads to heaven. It's okay. No, you can keep doing that and it's okay. God still loves you. Oh, yeah, God will still let you into heaven even, even though that's, that's really completely opposite of what the Bible says. It's okay. Oh, yeah, sure. You can, you can do whatever feels right and it's okay because it's all relative. But that's... It's not what the word says, right? And so what, what I want to do today is I want to show you this kind of progression and how do we respond to, uh, to this persecution, all right? So the culture, so, so I think that we're living in a culture, the, the similarity between us and Babylon is we're living in a culture that is trying to force you to cave in. We're, we're living in a culture today that is kind of, it's kind of forcing your hand. And I love what Charlotte Gamble says. She says that the culture around you is not bigger than the kingdom of God within you. Come on, there you have the spirit of God living inside of you. And you don't have to cave to the things that are going on, on around you. You don't have to cave to the temptations, to the fears, to the accusations. You don't have to cave to that. And I think we're, we're, where we're at today in society and in our culture as a church is that we... For years, we were able to just be casual Christians, convenient Christians. You have to be a Christian when it's convenient for me. Like I remember I got pulled over by a police officer years ago. I was a teenager, still in high school, and I got pulled over for crossing a median. We were in traffic on interstate, 
And you know the sign that says authorized personnel only? I didn't listen. And I, I cut through there, and I, I was going to go a different way, and uh, he, he pulls me over. And, I mean, was, this was a convenient moment to be a Christian because I, I, I noticed the cross on his lapel. I'm like, hey, you a Christian? <laughs> so convenient, right? He still gave me a ticket. We, we've we've kind of gotten away with being casual Christians, being being complacent Christians, being uh, you know convenient Christians, and and I think culture is forcing us right now to choose. Are you are you going to do it the world's way, or are you going to do it the word's way? Are you going to do it God's way, or are you going to do it the world's way? And I think we need to go ahead and decide that now. We need to pre-decide which way are we going to do it so that when we're forced with a decision, when we're forced with persecution, we're not wringing our hands trying to figure out what we're going to do about it. All right? And so this is, this is what I want to do today. I want to walk us through this story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in Daniel chapter 3. Let me set it up for you. Okay, so these Hebrew... Young men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they've been brought into Babylon. King Nebuchadnezzar brings them in, and he brings in all kinds of smart young men, and he is indoctrinating them into the culture of Babylon. In fact, he has them watch TikTok eight hours a day, and that's how he indoctrinates them. Just whatever you see on there, that's what you do, right? And, and uh, we, we laugh, but the truth is there's a whole lot of people, a whole lot of people in our culture today that are getting their theology from social, social media. They're, they're getting, uh, you know, well, I saw it on TikTok. It must be true. No, it's not. It's not true. Right? And so, so he's indoctrinating them, and he's changing everything about them. He's changing uh, even their names. Their names really weren't Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The time out. I'm going to actually do a series on the book of Daniel coming up in um, in September, if that's okay. And we're going to study how to stand strong in a bow-down world, okay? And we're going to learn that. So there's more of this to come. But, but in this story, he changes their names to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three Hebrew young men, they're out of their culture. They're out of Israel. They're forced into this new culture. Forced, they're, 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 they're forced by uh, like persecutions in their face. And they, they decide, you know what, we're not, we're not going to bow. We're going to stand strong for what we believe in. We're going to stand for righteousness. We're not going to cave in to the pressure. We're not going to defile our bodies with, with their kind of food. And we're not going to, and, and, and we're not going to worship their false gods. And they were persecuted because of it, all right? So if you take a stand... And if you choose that I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Christian, I believe in Jesus Christ, I, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ, I mean, I'm not, not trying to speak this over you, but there will be persecution. There'll, there'll, there'll be people, and it may not be like what we see in other countries right now, but there will be some persecution. It will find you. And so here's the thing. Persecution comes to do three things. In your notes, it comes to steal your voice wants to silence you, wants to, wants to quiet you down. Stop talking about Jesus so much. Stop talking about your faith so much. Stop talking about all the things that God's doing in your life. I, I don't want to hear about your word. I don't want to hear about the Bible. Silence, quiet. And it comes to kill your spirit. It comes to get you to just, not only to just be quiet, but to just lose hope. Yeah, you're a Christian, but you're not really an effective one. Does that make sense to you? You're like, I believe, but even the demons believe, the Bible says. So we could, we, could be, we could believe in Jesus, but be ineffective in our faith. To kill your spirit. And he comes to destroy your legacy, which is really about passing this baton on to the next generation. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So how do I respond to the enemy? How do I respond to persecution that comes to steal, kill, and destroy? Let me give you three things. Number one, when, when I am faced with persecution, I need to deepen my conviction. This is not the time for me to back up and be like, oh, well, I'm, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. This is not the time for me to go, you're right. I shouldn't be vocal about my faith. I, I, no, no. It's the time for me to deepen my conviction. No, no, no. I, I do believe in Jesus. 
I believe he is who he says he is. I do read my Bible. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't be quiet about that, right? And, and by the way, you do it in truth and grace, which I'll teach you in this Daniel series. But you have to deepen your conviction when there's persecution. Let me show you this story. In, in Daniel chapter 3, it says, At this time some astrologers came forward, and they denounced the Jews. And they said to King Nebuchadnezzar, oh, May the king live forever. That, that's just how I, it sounds in my mind. Like I, I imagine these guys with like long, curly, colonial like type white hair. And they're like, oh, king, may you live forever. By the way, um, I think we're living in a culture that tries to get close to whoever they think has the power. We, li we live in a society where, oh, I, I follow them because they have the most followers. I follow them because their content is really good. They make great videos. We're living in a culture that, that it gets close to people because they think they have the power. May the king live forever. And they said, oh, your majesty. Your majesty's issued a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, whatever a zither is, lyre, harp, pipe, and all kinds of music, must fall down and worship the image of gold. And that whoever does not fall down and worship will be thrown into the blazing furnace. Oh, but your majesty, there are some Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the providence of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you. Oh, your majesty. The, the, it's, kind of, it's like, you just want to be like, oh, come on, man. Y'all are looking for trouble. You're just looking for someone, right? And, and I want you to notice something. Look, notice this next line. They neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold that you've set up. They were accusing the three Hebrew boys, teenagers, by the way, for their righteous living. Oh, they're not accusing them for something unethical. They're not accusing them for something that they, they did that was blatantly wrong. They're accusing them for loving God. They're accusing them for, for serving God. And, and by the way... Don't be shocked when culture tries to steal your voice. Don't be shocked when young people, high schoolers, middle schoolers, college age, don't be shocked when, when culture tries to pressure you into compromising your convictions. Don't be shocked. What do you, well, what do you do, Pastor Ben? You deepen your convictions. You say, this is what I believe. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry I can't date you. Well, you... Well, you, you're not going to date me? I'm, I'm, you're not, you're not going to go out with me? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I just I don't date losers. <laughs> you're saying I should break up with him? I mean, maybe. Maybe you should. I, I'm, going, I'm on a tangent, y'all. Uh, this is my first week back. I'm, I'm so sorry. Um, you just deepen your convictions, right? You, you, you say, no, I'm, I'm not going there. I'm not doing that. I'm not going to, hey, I'm, I'm not going to watch that. I'm not going to smoke that. I'm not going to take that. Whatever it is, you deepen your convictions. Well, you're just a fuddy-duddy. That's okay. I'll be a fuddy-duddy because I'm deepening my convictions. And he goes on. It says that, that, that after, they, after they were, the king was told this, he was furious with rage. Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and so these men were brought before the king, and Nebuchadnezzar says to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I've set up? And I want you to notice that he doesn't give them a chance to answer. And that's, that's where we're at today in our culture. You don't get a chance. You don't, you don't get a chance to rebuttal. You don't get a chance to answer. You don't get a chance to stand up for what you believe. You don't get a chance to say anything because it's, it's, it's all just... It, it's, it's all going to be wrong anyway. It's not going to fit the culture. It's not going to fit what, what, what they want to hear. And so he does the same thing here, and, and he just goes straight to the next thing. He says, he says, so when you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipe, all kinds of music, if you're ready, I mean, if you want to work here, I mean, if you want to be on this team, you'll be at practice on Sunday. I mean, if you, if you want to be part of this, 
then it's, it, yeah, you don't have time for anything else. If you want to be a part of what I'm, if, if you want this opportunity, and this is kind of the ultimatum he gives them. If you're ready to fall down and worship the image I've made, great, that's awesome. <laughs> we won't have to do plan B. But if you don't, watch this, if you do not worship, and this is the ultimatum that culture and persecution gives. The, the ultimatum, persecution looks like ultimatums. If you do this, then it'll all be okay. If, if, if you, if, as long as you don't mention Jesus, I mean, everything's going to be okay. I mean, if you, if, you want to, if you don't bring the Bible into this, it's all going to work out just fine. If, if you just don't, just watch what you say. And, and it'll all be all right. If, but if you don't, there's going to be hell to pay. If you don't, we're canceling you. Cancel culture. Am I, am I preaching? To, maybe I should tone it down a little bit. I'm not sure. I just, uh, I, I just feel like we, 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 I'm trying to teach you how to survive, how to not just survive but thrive, how to respond to persecution and I want you to watch what they do. I mean, he threatens, the king threatens, we're going to cancel you. And, and they don't get upset. They don't get mad. They don't say, let me tell you something, king. They, they, they don't raise their voices. You know, they, they don't start throwing stuff. Watch what happens here. Watch this. It says, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him and said, king, uh, we don't need to defend ourselves. If you get, just give us a second to talk to you. We don't, need, we don't need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. We're not trying to work up an argument with you, king. We're not trying to prove that we're right and you're wrong. But if we're thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us. I want you to notice that. He is able to deliver us from it. And not only is he able, but watch it. He will deliver us from you, your majesty. Come on. Like, not only is he able, but he will. So here, here's something that they had to wrestle with. Coming into this persecution, they had to wrestle. Jesus says, blessed are the persecuted for, of righteousness because they will inherit the kingdom of God. They had to wrestle with the fact that they would either be blessed on this earth or they would be blessed in eternity. They had to settle in their heart that he will either deliver me here now or he will deliver me there. On the other side, he's going to deliver us, your majesty, but even if he doesn't deliver me, even if I have to suffer at your hand, even if I have to go through this on earth, I want you to know that your, your majesty, that, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold that you have set up. We love you. We appreciate you. But we're not going to bow. We're, we're not going to bow. And so when persecution comes, here's the thing. You've got to know what you believe. You don't need to try to figure out what you believe in the middle of it. You need to know now, this is what I believe. This is who I serve. And if you don't believe the word, I'm telling you, you will cave. You will fall under pressure. You will, you will quit. All right? So here's, here's the thing. You deepen your conviction. See, this, this persecution is trying to steal your voice. But if it can't steal your voice, it wants to kill your spirit. All right? So we're, how do we respond to this? Deepen our conviction. We, we, we dig deeper, right? See, persecution wants you, wants you to... It expects that you'll fall at the first hurdle. And that's what, that's what uh, Nebuchadnezzar had hoped. He's used to people just obeying his command. Well, this is the law, and you obey the law. Or you get thrown in the furnace. He's used to people... Falling at the first hurdle, but and he's he's used to intimidation working, and it doesn't work on these guys. It doesn't. He can't cancel them. So these three Hebrew teenagers decide we're all in. We know what we believe, and we're not backing down. We're going to stand firm. We're going to love well, and watch what happens. That then Nebuchadnezzar was furious. He they say, hey, we're not bowing down. He's furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitude toward them changed. Can you see that our culture is turning away from God? The attitude of our culture is, 
is, is turning away from God, not to God. And this happened in Nebuchadnezzar's day with these three Hebrew boys. His attitude towards them changes. And, and I just want to take a minute. I, I feel like I, this is a God-ordained moment to, to really talk about something that's special to me. Because here's, here's the thing. Um, we're not in a war against people outside of this building. We're not in a war against a people group that doesn't believe like us. We're not, we're not in a battle against people who, who um, think completely different. No. The way Paul says it in Ephesians is we're not, we're not struggling against flesh and blood. Okay? People on the outside of the walls, people who aren't believers, people who aren't Christians, uh, I, I can't fault them for not knowing any, any different, for not, not believing, for... I, I, that, that's just, that's to be expected, right? So my war, my battle is not with people. It, it's not against flesh and blood, but it's against rulers and against authorities. It's against powers of this dark world. And against, it's against spiritual forces of evil. Did you hear that? It's not against each other. Our battle is a spiritual battle. Our battle is a spiritual warfare that's not against each other, but it's against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. That's where our war is. That's where our battle is. And that's why I'm inviting you to be part of 21 days of prayer this coming fall. I'm telling you, it is one of, it's one of the things we do well and we do right here at City Hope Church. It will, it, will, um, it will catapult you into the next level of your faith. But here, here's the thing. It, it's, a, it's a sacrifice. And the way I like to say it is it's... And I don't mean to minimize where you might be in your faith journey, but it's what mature people do. And I say it that strong because it's like, it's one of those things because it's a six o'clock in the morning prayer service. Six to seven, Monday through Friday, Saturdays at 9 a.m. And I'm telling you, there will be hundreds of people in this room at 6 a.m., going after God, seeking the heart of God, and we're going to see miracles, and we're going to see people healed, and we're going to see children come back to know God. We're going to see marriages restored. We're going to see Wichita Falls transformed. It's going to be powerful. But it happens because of sacrifice. It happens because I get up early in the morning, and I do something that I don't really want to do, but I do it, and it draws me closer to God. And, and this year, this, this year, we're not only doing it here at Cedar Realm, but we're hosting it in Burt Burnett as well as we get ready for, to launch that campus. It'll be at Jubilee Christian Center, 6 o'clock in the morning. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be awesome. And I'm just encouraging you, go all, hey, it's not against flesh and blood. It's spiritual. Let's go. Let's go. Amen, everybody? Amen. I know that's pretty strong, but I just feel like we we, we got we to gotta be ready. God's working. Let's keep going with the story. So he orders... The furnace heated seven times hotter, which is crazy, right? Because why would you heat a furnace hotter than normal? Because, I mean, a furnace is going to kill you no matter what, right? It's kind of silly, but that's what culture does. If culture can't get you the, the first go around, it just turns up the heat. If persecution can't get you to fall the first time around, let's just, let's just throw out another accusation. Let's throw out another lie. Let's throw out another attempt to cancel. Let's throw out another temptation and see if they fall. Is this helping anybody today? So, so he heats up the furnace seven times hotter than usual and commands some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shaddy, Messy, and uh, Betty. And he throws them into the blazing furnace. And so that leads us to number two. How do I respond to this persecution? Okay. He's about to throw them into the fiery furnace. And here's what these three... Hebrew young men have to realize is that God is with me. <laughs> They're about to throw me into the furnace. This is about to, it's about to go down. I'm, my life is about to be over, but God is with me. Man, I don't know what's going to happen from here, but God is with me. I know that I told the king he's going to rescue us, but even if he doesn't, God is with me. And that's what we have to remember. That's what we have to remind ourselves. He is with us. See, the enemy wants the furnace to destroy you, but God uses the furnace to purify you. Come on. Come on. Man, I'm, I'm preaching today. I just thought, I, it's so good. I mean, I, I'm kidding. I guess I am. 
not kidding, but kidding at the same time. Because like, when you think about that, nobody likes fire. I don't want to go through the fire, but the fire is what purifies you. The crucible for silver, the furnace for gold, the Lord tests the heart of his church. That what's, that's what Proverbs says. The, the, the fire tests us. The fire purifies us. The fire, it's in the fire that we become the people that God's called us to be. And these three Hebrew boys, they get thrown into the fire. And when you get thrown into the furnace, let me tell you something. You have one of two choices. You can choose. Am I going to let this fire ruin me? Am I going to let it destroy me? Or am I going to let it refine me? Am I going to let it make me into who God wants me to be? Am I going to let it make me into the person that God wants me to be? And am I going to let it take me to the place that God wants me to be? And this is, this is so true about fire. Fire, yeah, it can destroy you, but fire can, through fire, you can be forged into a mighty weapon for God's use. Come on, you can be forged into an incredible weapon. I want to talk to the men for just a second in here. Men, I need you. This, wor this, this world needs you. Every, every man, we need you. We need some mighty weapons to be used for God's kingdom. Fathers, husbands, leaders in our community, business owners. These are men that that will stand in the face of persecution and say, you know what? I believe. And if it costs me everything, I'm, I'm willing to go down that street. And one of the ways that we could get there, men, is, is uh, what the Bible says, iron sharpens iron. As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another man. Come on, somebody. But, you know, you can't really, you can't sharpen yourself. You, you, you get sharpened when you're around other people. But in order for you to be sharpened, in order for iron sh to sharpen iron, you're going to have to get around some iron. And that's, that's why I'm, I want to invite you to men's night coming up August 11th. We've been talking about this for several weeks. Come, it's a free event, by the way. You, we only register just so that we can plan ahead because everything's, it's not, it's free, it, it, but it's, you already paid for it when you gave in the offering. All right. So that's how that works. That's why we don't charge you for it because you already paid for it. All right. But, but you have to, we, we want you to register so we can plan ahead. But when you get around some other men, that men's night, and, and you're just, man, you, you, it's just something about it. You walk away sharpened. You walk away going, you know what? I'm a pretty good dad. <laughs> yeah, I, I got some rough edges I need to sharpen a little bit. Yeah. Man, I'm, there's some areas I can grow in. I'm, I, I need to work on this in my marriage, whatever it is. And it, it sharpens us. It helps us become the men that he's called us to be. And so I want you to register because it's going to be incredible. And we're going to walk away from that night encouraged and changed and challenged. Amen, everybody? Amen. Amen. So let's sharpen each other. But the, the, we'll keep going with this story. So these men, these teenage young men, like they're, they're teenagers, wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, other clothes, they were bound, they were thrown into the blazing furnace, and the king's command was so urgent that the furnace was, and the furnace was so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers. Now think about this for a second. Uh, persecution and culture doesn't care who it hurts. Culture doesn't care. Culture doesn't think rationally. Culture flies off the handle and goes, well, we'll just, we'll just kill everybody then, right? That's what persecution says. That's, what the, that's the way culture is. We'll just, we'll just heat the, the furnace seven times hotter. That's what we'll do. What do you do that for? It, killing the people close to the king. Culture doesn't care who it loses. So how, how do I respond to that? So they throw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the three, uh, these three men into the fiery furnace, the blazing furnace. And then the king leaps to his feet in amazement, and he asks, Hey, weren't there, weren't there three men that we tied and threw into the fire? Which seems like a ridiculous question, right? Like, if, Well, first of all, king, you didn't tie up anybody. That, we, we did that. But um, <laughs> they, they probably didn't say that, because they would have gotten thrown in too. But they're like, uh, yes, there were three. And they, they said, Oh, certainly, your majesty. <laughs> he says... Well, I see four. I see four. There's a song. There is another in the fire standing next to me. That's all, the, that's all I know of it, but it's really good. 
love I love that. He sees there's there's four men walking around unbound, unharmed, and the fourth looks like the son of the gods. See, I don't think he knew what to call the fourth one. What he was trying to say is it, is it looks God-like. There's something different about it. Who he saw was Jesus Christ. Most theologians believe it was a Christophany. Jesus was there with those three young men. God is with you in the fire. Amen, everybody? <laughs> oh, I love this. So Nebuchadnezzar, he approached the opening of the blazing furnace. He shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ser servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. And so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, wait, let, let me go back. I, notice these words. Servants of the who? Most High God. Oh, come on, somebody. When, when, there's a time when culture realizes, oh, he is who he says he is. I don't have to convince them. I don't have to change their mind. God will change it for them. That's the Holy Spirit's work in their life. There's a coming a moment when they, their eyes are opened and they go, he is who he said. He is the most high God. Come out here. And so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire and the satraps, prefects, governors, and the royal advisors crowded around them. And that leads me to number three. And that is... Here's how we respond to persecution. We've got to let persecution lead us to promotion. Yeah. See, they, they, they didn't fight for the promotion. They didn't fight for their place in history. They just stood for what was right. And, and they were about to lose everything. But God was with them in the fire. Amen. He never left them. Amen. And in fact, he turned it around for their good. <laughs> for every persecution... God has a plan. Every time you go through something difficult and you feel like, man, I'm being persecuted for my faith or for what I believe in, God has a plan for that. There, there's a, <laughs> I don't know who sings this country song. You guys will probably know it and be able to sing along really well. Um, I'm, I'm just saying because we all like it. It's country, right? We like country. It's a song that goes, if you're going through hell, keep on going, don't look back. If you're scared, don't show it. You might get out before the devil even knows you're there. <laughs> what I love about country music is when you play country music, you get your wife back, your dog back, you get it all. Um, all right. You lead, lead to persecution, lead to promotion, not persecution. Lord, help us. Um, so they saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies. I mean, there was not a hair of their head singed. Robes were not scorched. No smell of fire on them. Somebody, I just felt as I was preparing today, <laughs> somebody needed to hear that your future doesn't have to smell like your past. You've been through something and you felt disqualified and you felt like you, you, man, I can't, God can't use somebody like me. I'm damaged goods. I've gone too far. I've got a problem. Your future doesn't have to smell like your past. And so... I love what Paul says to, to the Roman church. He says, in all things, some of you felt like I've gone too far. God can't use somebody like me. I've got a past. I've got baggage. In all things, God works. Well, Pastor, you don't know what I've, I've been married. Six in all things, God works. I've got kids from four different women. In all things, God works. I've been addicted to pornography, to alcohol, to substance abuse, whatever. In all things, God works for the good of those who love him. Not, not for the good of everybody, for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. So these three Hebrew boys, they, they stayed true. They stood in the face of of persecution they stood for righteousness 
and the king promoted <laughs> Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And here's the thing. Your life, if you ever face persecution, there is promotion, right? It's, but it, it's either in this life or the next life. Because God doesn't always rescue when you're in the middle of persecution. Did you hear that? Um, I don't know if I've got time for this. I'm going to really try to hurry. Not in my notes, but I was talking with the prayer team earlier and before our first service. Uh, thought about John the Baptist. You know, John the Baptist was, he was the forerunner, the front runner for Jesus. And he was persecuted for righteousness. He was imprisoned because he stood for what was right. And he sent his disciples to ask Jesus, are you the one who was promised? I mean, this, they're cousins. He and Jesus are cousins. And he's asking, after he's being in the middle of persecution, he's asking, are you the one? You see, because... A lot of Rome, a lot of Jewish people in that time, they thought that the, the Messiah would come and he would rescue all of the Jewish people, that he would conquer Roman authority and he would set all of the Jewish people free. And here's John in prison. Are you coming to get me, Jesus? And Jesus says, go tell John what you see and what you hear. Tell him that the blind eyes are opening. Tell him that the deaf ears are can hear telling the lame are walking and he's loosely quoting Isaiah in Isaiah the prophet Isaiah says the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach good news to the poor he's anointed me to to to, to heal the lame the, the the blind and he's he sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and that's the one thing Jesus didn't say to John he said, go tell him, go tell him that the blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk. But he said nothing about releasing him from captivity. But what he did say was, tell him he'll be blessed if he doesn't fall away because of me. Tell him he'll be blessed if he stands for righteousness. Because why? If we stand for righteousness, ours is the kingdom of heaven. I'm going to experience the goodness of his kingdom on this earth or <laughs> in heaven. And I got to be prepared for either one. All right? Come on. Can we just give God thanks today for Would you bow your heads with me? Close your eyes. And... I want to pray for those of you who feel persecuted right now. You, you feel like you've been given an ultimatum at work or at school or maybe you're a parent and you, f you feel like, I don't know, just this, this you, you feel being persecuted because you, man, you, you have a, a child and you, you feel like that things aren't going well for them because of your faith. And I don't know, maybe you're a spouse here today and your husband or your wife is persecuting you for what you believe you come to church but they don't and they're always harping about church and Jesus and holy roller or you know bible thump or whatever I don't, I don't know maybe you're persecuted because you you took a stand at school and it wasn't as easy as you thought you feel the weight of that Lord I just pray right now your blessing over every person here today every person who who feels the weight of persecution feels like 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 they're, they're 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 being tried like they're in the furnace right now god i pray that in this moment deepen their conviction god would you deepen our conviction before we get to a point where we're in the middle of persecution lord deepen our faith now and help us to remember that you're with us help us to remember you're always with us you never leave us you never forsake us you're there to the very end, we thank you for that, God.
I'm praying right now, Lord, that you give us faith to believe that you're always there in the fire, in the flood, in the temptation, in the trials. You're always there. Give us faith to believe that if you parted the seas before, you could do it again. Give us the faith to believe that if you've healed before, you could do it again. Give us the faith to believe that if you rescued those three Hebrew boys, you'll rescue us, God. Give us that faith to believe it. And Lord, we pray that you'd strengthen us to fight the good fight because, Lord, we're going to stand before you one day and we want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Lord, that's our, our heart's desire. That we wouldn't give up. We wouldn't give in. We wouldn't throw in the towel. We, we wouldn't, Lord, that if we ever feel like that, we would think about our legacy. We would think about who's, who's going to carry this torch forward if I quit now. Strengthen us today in Jesus' name. And with your head still bowed, maybe you're here today and, and you're far from God. Uh, maybe maybe you're, you're that person that I was talking about earlier who feels like your past defines your future. You feel like you're damaged. You feel like you're, you've gone too far. You've got sin in your heart, sin in your life. And, and you feel the weight of your mistakes, the weight of your sin. I want to tell you that there is nothing you have done it's too hard for Jesus to forgive. He can forgive anything. You're not too far gone. You're not damaged goods. You have a purpose. You have a plan. There's a destiny for your life. There's a purpose that God has for you. And he's not mad at you. He is madly in love with you. He's standing on the front porch of heaven right now, longing for you to come home. And I want you to know that Jesus went to the cross. He died on the cross, not just for your sins, but he died to cleanse you from, from, from guilt and condemnation and impurities. He died to cleanse you from everything. The Bible says to, 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 to wash you clean, to wash you white as snow. He died for that. And all you have to do to receive this kind of righteousness that we're talking about today is make a decision to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, to completely surrender to Him 100%. And this is a starting point. It's not the finish line. It's the starting point. And if you're here today and you say, Ben, I I'm ready. I'm ready to go all in with Jesus. I'm ready to surrender. I'm ready to make Him the Lord of my life. On the count of three, I want you to boldly lift up your hand. If that's you, one, two, three. Come on, slip up your hand today. I see you. One, two, three, four, five. Come on, anybody else say that's me? Six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11. Who else would say 12, 13? Anybody else? 14. Come on. I see you. I'm proud of you. Every hand that's up. I'm so proud of every one of you. So proud of you. This is your moment. This is a moment God's working in your heart. Amen. Hands down. And let's say this prayer together today. Say, Jesus, I give you my life. I'm so sorry for doing things my way. Will you forgive me? Will you cleanse me? Wash me. Make me new. I want to stand for you. I want to live for you. A righteous life. So Lord, will you forgive me? Cleanse me? Wash me? Give me a fresh start? And from this day forward, I commit to live for you the best that I know how. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.